top tech companies like Intel have a secret to their success. They get the best talent, reliable infrastructure, and save on costs by expanding in Ohio, the new Silicon Heartland. Learn how your business can succeed in Ohio. Visit successinohio.com. Hey, Optimal Startup Daily listeners. This week, we're sharing something special, the No Priors podcast. No Priors is your guide to the AI revolution. At this moment of inflection in technology, Co-hosts Alad Gill and Sarah Guo ask the world's leading AI researchers and legendary founders the biggest questions. How far away is AGI? What markets are at risk for disruption? How will commerce, culture, and society change? What's happening in state-of-the-art research? You can find No Priors wherever you get your podcasts. This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 957. Opening Social Networks Within a Company by Carl Stabe of digtofly.com. And hey again, I am Dan. I'm your host and narrator here on OSD, the show that's all about improving your business life. So I'm happy to be here sharing another article with you from Carl Stabe this time. And I will tell you more about uh, Carl and his site after the post. But uh, right now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Opening Social Networks Within a Company by Carl Stabe of digtofly.com. Creating social networks within your organization will improve communication. You'll be encouraging a village community atmosphere instead of cliques or separate groups who only visit each other when they need something. Your company can try implementing a social friendship plan. You can do this by rotating various departments to help each other work on tasks or come up with new ideas and systems. If you want your company to foster relationships, you need to create a spider web of connections that help everyone support each other. This is different from cross-training because you are trying to create new friendships and networks that will help get around some of the red tape, as well as construct a friendlier atmosphere. You don't want people just hanging out like it's a mini party and dragging down the productivity of a department, so you'll have to figure out the best way to encourage work. You'll probably want to foster a teacher-pupil relationship, having the teacher show the various tasks that go on throughout a day. You'll probably be surprised by how much work gets done because the teacher wants to show the pupil how intriguing or intricate their job can be within those few hours. Creating a village solution. Everyone in the company should rotate around the various departments until everyone gets a larger idea of what the other department does throughout a day. Small company. If you have a small company with under 10 people, then try a rotation of partnerships every Wednesday morning for an hour until everyone has had a chance to work with each other. The best way to do this is to pick half the company to rotate to another person's job. When their time is up, then switch the rotation. It should take less than two months and only nine hours of time. You may think that it will hurt your bottom line because it's one hour less that they are working on their task, but you must think long-term. The health of a company depends on its relationships, and if a small company can stay close-knit, then you've helped create a team that will assist each other when they are in a bind. Medium-sized company. If you have a medium-sized company, between 11 and 500 employees, then try rotating between three of the closest related departments. For instance, put sales with marketing and production. Sales needs to understand the message that marketing is putting out to the public. They also need to understand where the product or service comes from, so they know how to explain the features and benefits. Put marketing with upper management and sales. Marketing needs to understand the direction that management wants the products or services to go in to create their message. They also need to understand what's working and what isn't by communicating with sales. And put accounting with creative people and marketing. Accounting needs to understand what the creative people have in mind so they can explain what the budget looks like for the upcoming projects. They also need to understand the money that marketing spends and what they can do to make their money stretch farther. By putting the departments together that have the most to learn from one another, then you can create open lines of communication. You can also do this with large companies if you feel like it would benefit the organization. People want to work together for the greater good of the company. It's up to management to make sure that it happens. Large company. If you have a large-sized company, greater than 501 employees, then try rotating people within their own department. A sales department can be filled with a thousand or more people. Everything is so specialized that they might not even know what one of their coworkers is accomplishing. It will foster learning and a little competition. By rotating a department around, you can open social networks, encouraging people who want to help each other achieve success. Your company should encourage the employees from different departments to get to know each other. 
it will create friendships and loyalty toward each other. What should happen is a tighter-knit group, willing to support each other instead of fighting for better position. You'll have some grumps and killjoys in every group, but after a short period of time, communication will open. Discuss Communication Project The most important part about trying to implement this plan is to recap the project with the employees involved. Ask them what they liked and disliked. You can use this to adjust for the next time. When they see that you are trying to create a more open and friendlier atmosphere, they'll be more willing to participate. Opening social networks should also improve company retention. People stay with a company when they feel they are a part of a family atmosphere. Over time, as the program progresses, the villagers will encourage change and adapt new ideas as they learn from each other. You just listened to the post titled Opening Social Networks Within a Company by Carl Stabe of digtofly.com. Whether in person or remote, open communication with your doctor is key to managing any condition, including heart failure. How have you been feeling? Um, I'm okay. Both are great options to continue having open conversations with your doctor about how you're feeling. I've had less energy. And when you speak openly with your doctor, they're better equipped to help. Visit heartfailuretalks.com to learn more. The tech industry is having a rough season. Especially for startups compared to prior years, fundraising is increasingly hard and every dollar counts. Enter our sponsor, Notion. Notion helps startups, including us here at the Optimal Living Daily Network, save money by consolidating multiple tools you'd otherwise use for documentation, collaboration, and project management. Because of this, Notion can be a central hub for your teams to do the majority of their work. Whatever project is on your plate, Notion AI lets you skip to the good part. Save time and write faster by letting Notion AI handle the brainstorm and first draft, or turn your messy notes into something polished. Notion is now offering eligible startups up to six months free for their PLUS plan, plus unlimited AI for that six months through the Notion for Startups program. Apply for your startup's free PLUS access today at notion.com slash OSD. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. Start saving your startup some money and apply for Notion for Startups today at notion.com slash OSD. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. And thank you to Carl, who is a regular author here on OSD, and a little bit about him. He helps entrepreneurs understand their struggles and then turn them into stepping stones. In 2010, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer and then was laid off from his job in 2011. And while those were difficult situations, he calls them blessings in disguise, because since then, he stopped doing work that doesn't fit with his passions, and instead, now focuses on things he truly cares about. Carl is the author of the book, Bring Gratitude, and has a lot to offer on his site. So come by digtofly.com for a lot more, and I do have that linked in this episode's description for you. And if you're curious, dig to fly means dig deep to fly high. Also, Carl has a podcast. You can find the Dig to Fly podcast wherever you get your audio. All right, that's gonna do it for today. As always, I thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you back here again tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.